Here's our first video for factoring polynomials. We'll do a little bit of background information and then talk about factoring using the greatest common factor, the GCF. Let's start by just talking about finding the prime factors of a number. So we're, we're going to use 30 for an example. When we are looking for prime factors, we usually are making this kind of a tree where we look just for two factors. Any two numbers that multiply together will equal 30. I went for 3 and 10. Now the 3, if we think about breaking that up further, what are the factors of 3? The only pair of factors we could find would be 1 and 3, and that makes 3 a prime number. Any number where the only factors you can find are going to be the number itself and 1, that's a prime number. So we'll just throw a circle around the 3 and that's a dead end. But the 10, we can break that up further as a 2 times 5. The 2 is a prime number and the 5 is a prime number and there's nothing left to break down. So these dead ends are the prime numbers, the prime factors of 30. So we can write that 30 equals 2 times 3 times 5. And I just wrote them in e increasing order just to be organized. I want to point out to you that it doesn't matter how we initially break the number up. If I say 30 is 2 times 15, I'll see that the 2 is a prime number, and the 15, we can break that up as 3 times 5, and those are prime numbers, and we end up with the same result. So 2, 3, and 5 are the prime factors, the building blocks. It's almost like the DNA for the number 30. But if we want to factor something like x squared plus 4x plus 3, it, it's maybe a little bit trickier. Now, this trinomial maybe looks a little bit familiar to you if you've done lots of multiplying binomials together using the FOIL method. So maybe you'd believe me if I say that these are the factors, that these are the two quantities that multiplied together will give us this trinomial, x squared plus 4x plus 3. And that is what factoring is. We take something that maybe looks like it used, you know, this used to be an answer to a multiplication problem, and, and that's really what it is. And we're trying to come up with what were those two quantities that multiplied together gave us this trinomial for an answer. So multiplying would maybe say take these two binomials, do FOIL method and multiply and come up with this kind of an answer. But factoring is saying take this trinomial and figure out what were the two quantities that multiplied together gave us that trinomial. So we can check that these are the factors of x squared plus 4x plus 3. Let's do FOIL. So we've got x times x is x squared. Outer, x times 3 is 3x. And inner, 1x. Last is 3. We have like terms, the 3x with the 1x. So we'll combine those like terms and get 4x. And we definitely are coming up with that trinomial x squared plus 4x plus 3. But what's sometimes difficult about factoring polynomials is that different polynomials have different ways of factoring them. So we're going to just start with the GCF, the greatest common factor. And when we are talking about the greatest common factor, we're looking at all the terms we have. So for example, we have this binomial 5x plus 10. We have two terms. We've got <clears throat> positive 5x and a positive 10. And thinking about the greatest common factor is saying, in this term 5x, do we have a factor that we also would find in a positive 10? So we're thinking about what are the factors of 5x, what multiplied together gets us to 5x, and it's really only just 5 and x because we can't break down a 5. That's a prime number. And x, you just think of x as a prime number. We cannot break down an x. It's like a building block just like other prime numbers are. And what about a positive 10? We can break that up to a 5 and a 2, and those are, are both prime numbers. So we can see that there is a common factor 5. And what we'll do when we factor out the GCF is we take that common factor and put it out front. And I want you to think just for a second about the distributive property, where maybe you would look at a problem like 5 on the outside with x plus 2 inside, and you would distribute. You would take the 5 and multiply it to each term inside the parentheses, doing distributive property. And so when we see that there's a 5 that's been multiplied to both of these terms, we're doing distributive property in reverse. We're taking this 5 that's inside 5x and positive 10, and we're putting it out front. We're taking it from those two and putting it out front. And then what we'll put in the parentheses will be the terms that are left over. We have a positive x from the first term and a positive 2 from the second term. So when it's factored, 5x plus 10, 
equals 5 times this quantity x plus 2. And what we're looking at here, we're looking at two factors. We have the positive 5 is one factor, and this x plus 2 in parentheses is another factor. And we're going to think of that as like another prime factor. So we know that prime numbers are factors, and when we get to x, that's a factor. And now when we have quantities in parentheses, we're going to think of those as prime factors also. We're not going to try to break up the x or the 2 or any numbers or, or variables we would see inside parentheses. And quick check, if we do distribute right here, 5 times the x will give us that 5x. 5 times 2 is going to give us that 10. So definitely we, we factored this one. Let's look at another one here. It's 6x plus 12. And I want to just illustrate a point about the GCF. That when we are talking about the GCF, we definitely want to find the biggest common factor. So you could say, well, for 6x plus 12, I could put a 2 in front of parentheses because if we distribute there, it's going to give us 6x plus 12. But, or, or 3 could work, a 3 out front, and then we'll have 2x plus 4 inside. And then there's the last one, a 6 out in front. Now, the last one is really properly factored. These, the 2 on the outside and the 3 on the outside, not proper, they're not the GCF. And one way that you can tell is if you look at what we have left over in parentheses, you could see there's still a common factor between these two terms. Maybe we took a 2 out front as a common factor, but I can see, well, there's still a 3 that I could divide out of these two terms. And same thing with this middle example. We take out a 3, but we could still take out a 2. So really, the, the best way to do it, the way we should always do it, is to find the greatest common factor, the largest number, or the largest term that we can put out in front of the parentheses.